everything we can give you thanks.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you today. God, you are our strength. You are our shield. You are our fortress. You are our deliverer. And God, you are love. Jesus, I thank you that you showed that love when you came and you gave your life as a ransom. And because of you, Jesus, we no longer have to live in bondage to sin and to death. Holy Spirit, I pray and I ask that you would fill each and every house of the people of your church throughout this world. I pray that you would fill each and every heart of your children. That when we finally get back together on that day, when we get to celebrate together, I pray that we'd be so filled with joy and delight in who you are, because God, you are good. And so we lift this all up to you and we say, your will be done. In Jesus' name. Welcome to church this morning. It is so awesome that you could join us this morning. If it's your first time doing anything Bethel, I just want to encourage you to head over to Bethel.ca. If you go there and you fill out the online guest form, one of the pastors is going to get in contact with you. We want to hear your story. And if you need, we want to be able to pray with you. Kids, did you know that there's a service just for you? It's right after this and it's on YouTube. Bethel Kids Ottawa. You should go check it out because I hear it's fantastic. Junior and senior high, you guys know that you need to stay connected on Instagram. There, Pastor Mitch is always having a word of encouragement for you, a devo for you, and a challenge for you guys. So make sure you're connected with him. We have Mother's Day coming up. And we got a job for you. If you've got little ones who have moms, we want to get them on video saying what they love about their moms. Dads, this is a great time for you to take the load off mom and get this video shot yourself. It's real easy. You just take your phone or your camera, make sure you're shooting in landscape and not up and down. It's gonna be like a 10 second video of your kids saying what they love about mom. And then you send that to swall at Bethel.ca because we have a great plan to celebrate our awesome moms on Mother's Day. As always, we have our regular programming. On Wednesday, we have our 6.30 prayer meeting, which I encourage you to get to because we are still a church who prays. This is a Zoom meeting, so look for the link in Convos and Coffee. After that, there's this pretty awesome class, if I do say so myself, on 1st and 2nd Peter. I would love it if you came out and we dug into the Word together. It's at 7 o'clock and it's just straight on YouTube. And as always, we will have combos and coffee for you every weekday morning at 9 a.m. So go to Facebook and look for it. Go to YouTube and look for it. Or check your inbox because it's always coming in there. Your pastors just want to encourage you with a five-minute devotional. Hopefully bring you joy and encouragement from the Word. That's all I've got for you. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, go to Bethel.ca because 99.372% of your questions are probably answered there. Let's enjoy the service. And thanks, Pastor Rob, and thank you to all of you for joining us, Bethel family and friends, on this April Sunday morning. It's so great to have you join us. Thank you for welcoming us into your home or wherever you are watching this, this service. And thanks for coming into our home. We can't wait for that moment when we can be back together again. I just want to give you a great big <laughs> virtual hug right now. We miss you guys and love you so much. I do always want to encourage you to be faithful in your giving. There are just so many ways that we can be faithful with what God's given us. You can go to our website, Bethel.ca. All the information is there. You can do text to give. You can do an e-transfer at, Be at giving at Bethel.ca. You can phone the church and give us your information that way if you want to use a credit card. Or you can mail your gift or you can come by the church if you like. You can slide it in the mail slot. Thank you. Obviously, what's going on is an impact individuals it's impacting the church there's so many people that uh, that depend upon us to help them and support them so please we encourage you to be faithful in your giving thank you so very much and we also want to encourage you to join us on Wednesday nights at 6.30 at the prayer meeting. Every day in the email that we sent Monday through Friday, there are the instructions on how to get to be a part of that prayer meeting. And we're actually in the biggest crisis of our generation. And it's a time for us as the church to rise up 
join together and to call out to God on behalf of those in our world who are suffering um, for so many different needs. And we just have an amazing time together. So all the pastoral staff is there. We want to see you there. So please join us Wednesday nights at 6.30 for that. Another thing we want to encourage you to do is to uh, find ways that you could reach out to your community, to your neighborhood, to make a difference. And we've got a great story today about someone in the Bethel family that has put together a GoFundMe page and the company that they she works for is a nutrition company and they're raising money to buy nutritious meals for hospital workers and nurses and doctors and everyone working in the hospital and we just think that's a fantastic idea we encourage you to do that as well in fact what you could do is call a hospital and ask when they would like a meal and uh, get the details about when you can deliver it. We don't have to do this as a large group. You could do that with a bunch of your friends. Exactly. And um, we've actually know a little bit about this. So you call to find out when it could be delivered. They don't take homemade meals. So just be aware of that. You have to order food from a delivery service and the delivery service takes it directly to the hospital just for safety protocols. But this is a time for the church to be powerful in yeah. the community. So if any of you have an inspirational story like this one we share today, please share it with us because we want to encourage others to think about ways that the church can be outside of the box, outside of the walls, and do things that impact our city and people's lives. So we're just so thankful that you guys are stepping up and doing some beautiful things. And we're just so proud of our so church proud. family for what you're doing. Hey, one other thing too, the combos and coffee that we show every weekday with the pastor team, this coming week, starting tomorrow, Monday, we're going to have the pastoral team share a little bit about themselves, uh, things they like, pet peeves, that sort of thing, just to help uh, you get to know us better. Also, going forward, if you have questions, maybe a question about the Bible, maybe a question about life, mm -hmm. maybe a question about theology, please send those to info at Bethel.ca and we'll try to field those questions in convos and coffee. We, we, can't, can, we can't say that we know all the answers <laughs> to every question, but we'll do our level best. So we mm -hmm. just want you to engage with that. So if you have questions about anything, please feel free to fire it off to us and we'll start feeling those questions in the combos and coffee throughout the week. Well, well, well today is, is Community Impact Sunday. We have some amazing partners that we work with in our local area. So we put together a little video presentation for you uh, of, of their ministries. They're gonna share a little bit with us. So let's watch this video together. Let's think about opposites. Is the opposite of fear courage? No, the opposite of fear is love, for love dispels fear. Now how about the word addiction? Is the opposite abstinence? Hi, I'm Hope First Lewis, the Executive Director of Jericho Road Ministries. And at Jericho, we think the word abstinence is too small. We want people with mental health and addiction issues to experience spiritual and emotional sobriety, which is so much more than abstinence. In this time of COVID-19, we are operating our homes and finding ways to connect. <laughs> Check out our COVID-19 resource hub on the Jericho Road website. Remember, love conquers fear and emotional sobriety, which comes through connection, overcomes addiction. Jericho Road is operating today under the social and economic challenges of COVID-19. When this pandemic ends, many people will be needing recovery for addiction and mental illness. Support for Jericho Road and other frontline ministries now impacts then. Thank you. Good morning, Bethel. I'm so glad to have a chance to say thank you. Thank you for the ways that you support us. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you to your volunteers who come. I've been missing you. And thank you also to your Coldest Night of the Year team. You guys did amazing this year, raising $10,000. We're so thankful. And I also wanna tell you about how we've been adapting to COVID-19 and about how this window has allowed us to stay open. This window allows us to provide food and supplies uh, to our community daily. But more than that, it allows us to stay connected with our neighbors, many of whom live alone or in shelter and isolation to them would mean uh, complete isolation. So by being here, we're able to stay connected. And Bethel, I invite you to join with us in praying. You can visit 
capitalcitymission.com slash pray and find some specific ways you can be praying for our community at this time. If you are facing an unattended pregnancy, we're here to offer you free unbiased support. In Canada, there are more than 175,000 unintended pregnancies each year. You are not alone. We offer free confidential services available to you. You have the right to make an informed decision when it comes to your pregnancy and receive the support that you need to make the decision that is right for you. When facing a complex decision, you may not know what option is 100% right for you. With so many thoughts and opinions surrounding your options, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. We are here for you. If you are experiencing grief from a pregnancy loss, we provide post-abortion support, post-adoption support, and grief support following a miscarriage. We offer group and individual support for both women and for men. We also offer pregnancy support. We work with other services in the city to help provide you with the pregnancy support you may need. We exist to provide you with support. Hey, Bethel family, it's your missionary, Sean Naylor, out here in La Belle Province in the region of Sherbrooke. And you know, a lot of doors have been shut because of this quarantine, but a lot of doors have been opened and opportunities have been created. And I just wanna share with you that the ministry is still doing things and I thank you so much for your partnership in prayer and finances. It's amazing what God is doing and the things that are, that are happening. One is that right now I get to lead a team of Montreal Youth Unlimited staff on how to engage with online ministry. We're developing this whole protocol and all this stuff as well as creating videos constantly and ways to engage young people right where they're at. Still, I do a radio show every night engaging everyone from every age about all kinds of different subjects and whatnot. As well, I am creating videos that are coming out weekly called Life Lessons and they are just being engorged. It's awesome to watch uh, and, and see the, 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 the feedback Back that I'm getting and the questions that young people are asking about life, about faith, about things in general. It's amazing to see what they're doing. And finally, I'm still writing for a magazine called Love Is Moving, and it's, it's the side that I write for is for leaders. So we're leading young people, we're leading leaders to lead young people, and it's absolutely amazing with seeing what God is doing. I want to thank you so much for your partnership. And I thought there would just be one part of the Bible I'd love to take you to, to give you a word of encouragement. You go into the book of Habakkuk, the prophet is talking, and God sp speaks back to the prophet. And he says this, he says, look among the nations and watch and be utterly astounded for I will work in your day, which you would not believe though it were told to you. Listen, we can look at this big problem of, of quarantine and all of that stuff we got going on. And yet God says, look, I'm going to do something in your day that will utterly astound you. And even if I told you what I was working, you wouldn't even believe it. I mean, already all the types of conversations that I'm having and they're easily going towards faith. It's amazing. You guys are amazing. I love you so much. I hope this video has brought some light to your day and made you smile. Because remember, Jesus loves you. And uh, oh, yeah, I love you too. The Care Center has changed the way we operate in response to COVID-19. The gym has become a temporary new hub for the Care Center, where we are preparing pre-packaged boxes full of our regular non-perishable goods, along with milk, eggs, bread, and fresh produce. We have moved to a drive through model to limit exposure to both ourselves and our guests. When guests arrive, we place food items on tables where guests take them and put them in their car. Some guests are also coming by bus or on foot and are served in the same way. We are working hard to follow recommendations from health officials to help everyone stay safe. The need is so great, but we are seeing God multiply the amount of food before our eyes and miracles are happening. We served over 500 families during the month of March. Although we cannot all physically be together during this time, we can unite our voices together in prayer as we storm heaven on behalf of our guests. People are so open to hearing the gospel and we are trusting that the Holy Spirit will move upon our guests and community in a powerful way during this time. Thank you for your continued support and prayers. Who is my 
my neighbor. Scripture challenges us to broaden our definition of neighbor. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. For generations, Bethel has been responding to Jesus' command to go. People go out from here to remote places, bringing light to darkness, showing the great love of God. Around the world, we have gone, and we will go. Jesus commands us to go into all the world, our world, Ottawa. Let's serve people and show the great love of God. When you give to Bethel, you are fulfilling this mission. So watch each month as we highlight the many ways we're reaching our neighbor, here in Ottawa, across Canada and the world. so great to hear from our partners just appreciate them so much and I appreciate you because of your support we're able to help them so please keep praying for them let's keep believing together with them they're doing an awesome awesome job well this is the point in the service where I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10 verses 30 to 37 or you can go on your device or it will also be on the screen for your reading pleasure but let me read the Bible to you this morning a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed the street to the wrong side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the wrong side of the road. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Crossing the street and going over to him to the right side of the road, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm there. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. And Lord God, we thank you today for your word. Lord, I thank you for every person that's joined us today. I pray your blessing upon them. And Lord, I pray that you'd open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear your voice, open our hearts to receive all that the Spirit wants to say. And as always, we lift up the name of Jesus today because the name of Jesus is powerful. The name of Jesus is holy. The name of Jesus is beautiful. So Jesus, we lift you up today and we bring you glory and honor and praise. Touch our hearts today, we pray in Jesus' powerful name. And everybody said together in faith, amen, amen. Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 37, cross the street. It's funny what you remember from your childhood. There are some things that you'd never forget because your parents just drilled them into your head. Now with school not happening, with families working from home, I'm sure that your little humans are sticking to you like glue. Please, please give me some space. I'd like to give a shout out to all you parents today. When all of this is over, your shaggy hair will have some extra gray, but you guys are rock stars. And I'm sure there are some things in these weeks that you've been trying to drill into your kids. Well, here are some of the things that, that I remember my parents drilling into me. Here they are. Finish your main course or you'll get no dessert. Money doesn't grow on trees, Peter. Money doesn't grow on trees. And then this, look both ways before you cross the street. Cross the street. As part of his teaching strategy, Jesus tells lots of stories. We call them parables. There's the parable about the man sowing seed. There's the parable about the hidden treasure. There's the parable about the wedding banquet. And this passage, we read one of the most famous parables of all. It's called the parable of the Good Samaritan. 
People who have no idea that this story is even in the Bible still know what a good Samaritan is. It's a person who randomly assists somebody who's in need. You'll hear news reports or read posts about a good Samaritan helping in some situation. Restaurants sending food to healthcare workers are good Samaritans. I'm sure that a lot of you are doing good things during the COVID pand pandemic that are making you good Samaritans. Ontario has a good Samaritan law that protects people who try to help others. Well, in the original story, a guy is on his way from Jericho to Jerusalem, rather from Jerusalem to Jericho. He's walking on the road, minding his own business when he gets mugged. The bad guys rip off his clothes, they take his wallet, they steal his iPhone, they beat him up, and they leave him for dead. Well, randomly, along comes a pastor from the local church. He sees the guy lying on the side of the road. He checks him out. Man, you don't look so good. You'd think that he'd help him out. You'd think he'd at least call 911, but he crosses the street and he walks away. Then a student from the same church comes by. The student's an intern. He does exactly the same thing. He checks out the injured man and then he crosses the street and he keeps on going. Then along comes a guy who's called a Samaritan. In fact, he's called a despised Samaritan. Prejudice and racism were as alive then as they are now. Now to understand why he's called a despised Samaritan and how radical his actions are, we need to understand the historical context. The Samaritan people and the Jewish people are long-standing enemies. They don't like each other. The Samaritans are half Jewish and half non-Jewish in their heritage, and they create for themselves a religion that the Jewish people think is totally off. And they have this super feud. They're like the Hatfields and the McCoys. Just Google that and you'll see. They do not get along. Now, if we had to take a guess, if we had to make a call, we'd say that the Samaritan won't do anything to help. He won't even lift a finger. In fact, he might even be smugly happy to see this beat up Jewish guy at the side of the road. The Samaritan is the guy that we're sure will cross the street and keep on walking. But he doesn't. In fact, he crosses the street to what's called in the story the right side of the road and he helps. He crosses the street. And did you notice in the story how the sides of the road are described? They're not called the left side of the road and the right side of the road, which is how we would usually describe it. They're called the wrong side of the road and the right side of the road. The wrong side of the road is a side where help isn't given. The right side of the road is a side where help is given. We always want to cross the street to the right side of the road. We always want to be the people who do good. And who's on the side of the road? The beat up guy. But the beat up guy represents something. The side of the road is where the broken are. The side of the road is where the hurting are. The side of the road is where the wounded are. The side of the road is where people in need are. The side of the road is where some of us are. You might feel like you've been beaten up, and that's where you are. In fact, I think we've all been beat up a bit. We've all been impacted in some way by this global pandemic. Coronavirus puts all of us at the side of the road. We're all on the side of the road. Well, in the story, the Samaritan crosses the street and he goes to the side of the road. He bandages the beat up guy's wounds. He gets an Uber. He takes him to a hotel. He covers his expenses. He is a genuine good Samaritan. He's the real deal. And I hope you're inspired in your faith today and that we'll all be encouraged in the middle of unprecedented times to cross the street. With stories like this, there's often a bigger picture. 
So Pastor Sander and I are doing our very best to not leave our house. Hashtag stay home, hashtag stay safe. So we've gone back to some time-tested ways to occupy ourselves when we have a bit of spare time because you can only binge watch Netflix or, or Crave or Disney Plus so much. So, so here's what we've done. There's a puzzle on our dining room table that Sanders' mom loaned us. I am sure that there are pieces missing. All puzzlers know this feeling. And this week, Sandra found the game Battleship. You remember that game, Battleship. You sunk my battleship. It's been around forever. So she opens it up and she says, let's play. And I hesitate a bit because there's a bigger picture. Here's the bigger picture. The first time we played Battleship, we were just dating. So I was about 17 and she was 16. She opens up the game and she says, let's play. She gives me my part of the game and she says, just, just sit over there on the floor. No problem. Happy to do it. We start to play. We play multiple times, so many times, and she wins every time. I'm getting frustrated. Why can't I win this game? I I'm thinking she either has, has x-ray vision or she's some kind of genius at strategy. I'm so impressed. I mean, beauty and brains. This is awesome. Well, years later, Pastor Sandra makes a confession. You remember the day when we played Battleship and I won every game? Absolutely, like you were amazing. You remember I had you sit on the floor? Yes. I'm starting to get the sense that something is coming. Well, behind you was the TV. And I could see in the TV the reflection of your pieces on the board, and I knew where each one was. That's how I won. Somebody's cheating, but hey, beauty, brains, and tricky, it's all good. That's my bigger picture of Battleship. By the way, when we played this time, she won again, fair and square. There's always a bigger picture. Here's the bigger picture from the story of the Good Samaritan. It's not just about a guy on a road between Jerusalem and Jericho who gets mugged. It's not just about a Samaritan who helps him out. There are powerful symbols at play. A symbol represents something bigger than itself. It's about a journey called life. It's about what can happen to people on this journey. It's about all of us. And it's a story about the one who helps us. We're the ones who are broken. We're the ones who are hurt. We're the ones who've had our dreams stolen from us. We're the ones struggling with grief over what we've lost because of this health crisis. We're the ones worried about when this is all going to end and what will it look like when it does. We're the ones who've lost a sense of normalcy. We're the ones who had birthdays sidelined and, and weddings delayed and life events shrink way smaller than they should be. But then the full on Good Samaritan comes. But then our Jesus comes. He crosses the street to the right side of the road. He comes to where we are. And I, I love this. He doesn't just walk by. He doesn't just ignore us. He doesn't leave us alone in our struggle. He comes to heal our spirits. He comes to bandage our wounded hearts. He comes to console us in our disappointment. He comes to help us in our distress. He comes to forgive us of our sins. He comes to pick us up. He comes to take us to a safe place. Right now, he's crossing the street and he's coming to where you are. He is with you. Right where, you, in your home, he's with you. Right where you are. He's with you in your pain. He's with you in your confusion. He's with you in your worry. He's with you right now. And he pays every bill. 
He pays it with his own precious blood. Jesus crosses the street. He comes to the right side of the road and he sets us free. John chapter 8, verse 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you are truly, truly free. You can be free today, free from the fear, free from the concern, free from the worry, free from the stress. He'll make you truly free. And what's so awesome about this is His help isn't only confined to that moment when we give our lives to Him, which is fantastic. He also comes to the right side of the road and He helps us every single day. The truth is, we all face stuff all the time, especially right now. Nobody could have predicted that we'd be living through a global pandemic in the year 2020. Didn't see that one coming at all. Blindside. So how do you get ready for that? Can't. And just because we're followers of Jesus, it doesn't mean that hard stuff doesn't happen. It's pretty obvious that we aren't exempt from all that's going on. There's a fascinating series of events that take place at the front end of Jesus' ministry. So Jesus goes to a river to be baptized by his cousin John. John is this strange guy who wears strange clothes and he eats strange things. He has pandemic hair even though he's not living during a pandemic. I heard this week that, that Walmart is, is gauging the progress of COVID-19 based upon the panic buying phases. So the first phase was toilet paper. Remember this? Toilet paper? You couldn't find a roll on the shelves and nobody could spare square. And the second phase was yeast and flour. People who have never made bread ever before in their entire lives are now buying yeast and flour and they're becoming bread, bread makers. And now we're in the hair dye and clipper face. Everybody having a bad hair life right now said, Amen. And John's really popular and God is using him. So Jesus goes up to his cousin John and he says, John, I want you to baptize me. And John recoils. It's like, he's like, Are you kidding me? You want me to baptize you? You should be baptizing me. And Jesus says, John, this has to happen. This has to happen. So John agrees. Right after Jesus is baptized by John, the heavens open. The Spirit comes down like a dove. And then this, this booming voice, probably sounds like Morgan Freeman, speaks. Here's what he says, Matthew 3, verse 16. This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. It's clearly... The audible voice of God, everybody goes nuts. It goes viral on the social. Video is uploaded to YouTube. It's a massive high point. It doesn't get bigger than this. Jesus being baptized, the Holy Spirit descending as a dove, and the Father speaking is historic. But then the channel changes. It's like a huge spiritual whiplash because Right after the celebration of Jesus' baptism, he goes into the desert where he's tempted by Satan. Talk about spiritual freefall. I mean, baptism, huge, high, and then way down to temptation. He fasts for 40 days. The Bible says he's, he's really hungry, obviously. He hasn't had anything to eat for 40 days, but it tells us this because the Bible wants us to know that he is at that point physically weak and vulnerable. Then Jesus is tempted by Satan. Satan comes at you the hardest when you're spiritually weak and vulnerable. Don't let him lie to you about God's presence in your life in hard times like this. God is with you. He's near you. Let hope keep rising in your heart you might feel like a, like a prisoner in your home, but you're actually a, a prisoner of hope and you're anchored in Jesus. Pastor Sander posted this verse with some great thoughts on Facebook this week. Just listen to what it says, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore 
twice as much to you. Stay in your fortress. Stay in the fortress of our God. Let hope rise because he's going to restore to you way more than you've lost. I believe it and I declare it in Jesus' name for you. Let hope rise. Let hope rise. So in the first temptation, Satan pushes Jesus to make some bread out of stones because he knows Jesus is really hungry. He figures he can play on Jesus' physical need. I know you're starving, Jesus, so just, just make some bread out of these stones. And you got some yeast and flour from Walmart, so go ahead. Jesus says, forget it. He says, doing God's will is my food. So take, Satan takes another, another run at it. It's this second temptation that I find so fascinating. In the second temptation, Satan doesn't try to take advantage of Jesus' situation. In the second temptation, Satan doesn't make up some fake news. He actually uses truth. Here's what he says, Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, this is what blows my mind. For the scriptures say, Satan quoting scripture, the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. He's quoting from Psalm 91 and what he's saying is true. He's not making this up. This is really pretty bizarre. Satan is using the Bible that God inspired to tempt Jesus. And here's how Jesus answers in verse 7. The scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. The scriptures also say, they also say, what you say is true, but there's another truth. We all face truth in our lives, but there's another truth. You have your truth, but there's also God's truth. It's true that the coronavirus has turned everything upside down. It's true that your life can feel out of control. It's true that your health might not be great, and that's really got you worried that you'll get infected. It's true that money might be tight, even with government help. It's true that you might be struggling at work if you still have work. It's true that there's still no hard stop to COVID-19. We don't know when this is going to end. It's true that you might be afraid. It's true that you might be frustrated. It's true that you might be discouraged. It's true that it's really hard on your family. But there's also another truth. There's also another narrative. Here's the other truth. Here's the other narrative. Romans 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Romans 8, 37. In all these things, including pandemics, including stress, including trials, including troubles, in all these things, it doesn't matter what these things are. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You're more than a conqueror through him who loves you. That's the other narrative. That's the other truth. And our God feels what we feel. Our God lifts the weight of our burden. Our God soothes the sting of our pain. Our God walks beside us. He walks behind us. He walks in front of us. Our God knows the beginning from the end, and he holds us. He holds us in the shelter of his arms. He's the one who crosses the street and comes to us on the side of the road. He's the one who comes to broken people just like us. Thank God Jesus crosses the street. That's the big picture. And here's our picture. 
A week ago was Easter Sunday. What an awesome service we had, even though it was online. Now, there are some upsides to being online. You can dress up for church if you like, or you can wear your pajamas, nobody knows. You can have your coffee mug in your hand and have brunch on the table and still be church all at church at all at the same time. And if you miss the premiere of the service at our usual time on Sunday, it's always online. You can check it out and watch it whenever you like. You can pause me and play me and pause me and play me. There are upsides. Well, on, on the evening of the first Easter, which was in real time, Jesus appears to a group of his followers. He shows them that he's alive. He shows them that it happened just like he said. And then he says this, John 20, verse 21, As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. The same Jesus who comes to us at the side of the road wants us to pay it forward. He wants us to cross the street. He wants us to go to the right side of the road. And here's what we find on the right side of the road. God has strategically placed all of us, all of you, in the capital region or wherever you are right now. He strategically placed you for this moment. People all around us are spiritually broken, lying on the side of the road. They don't know what to do with their kids. They have parents in long-term care facilities and they're really afraid. They're in danger of domestic abuse. They have addiction issues. They have food security issues. These things haven't gone away or they seem to be doing great. But inside, they don't have spiritual hope. People all over this city and your city are broken and hurting. People all over this city and your city are in need. People all over this city and your city are wounded and they need somebody to help them. People all over this city and your city are lying on the side of the road. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you cross the street. We don't want to walk past these people. We want to create connections in a disconnected community. We're pleased as a church to be in partnership with ministries that have crossed the street to the right side of the road. We're pleased to partner with Capital City Mission and, and Jericho Road and First Place Options and Sean Naylor. We're thrilled to have the Care Center fully operating in our church through this pandemic and being a powerful partner with the Ottawa Food Bank, helping people in our neighborhood with practical needs. And in normal times, which is hard, we have street teams and strip club outreach teams and events and cafes and, and soccer camps and special events and lots of things that help us cross the street and take us to the right side of the road. These are all fantastic ways that the community is being impacted. But we have to be careful. We have to be careful that our partnerships and our normally programmed events don't stop us from impacting our community personally. We still need to cross the street as individual followers of Jesus. It's awesome that we can have effective partnerships with ministries who do the heavy lifting in specialized areas of need. It's awesome to hear stories of effectiveness and impact, but partnerships don't relieve us of the responsibility for personal involvement. We're still asked to pray. Like on Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m., we had an awesome time this past Wednesday. I'd love to have all of you join us. This is the time we need to pray. We're still asked to love. We're still asked to care. We're still asked to share. We're still asked to cross the street. Whether it's by making scrub caps for healthcare professionals or ordering food through Skip the Dishes or Uber Eats and sending it to frontline workers or putting notes of encouragement in your neighbor's doors or, or waving at the person across the street or whatever other ways the Holy Spirit inspires you to creatively engage. Right now 
is an awesome opportunity to cross the street. Right now is an awesome time to give a virtual handshake. Right now is an awesome time to be salt and light, even if it's in cyberspace. There, there are thousands and thousands of people within your reach. It's not hard to share an inspirational post. It's not hard to post or repost something encouraging with so much bad news all around. People are looking for hope. They're looking for spiritual truth. And crossing the street is sometimes only a click away. Our world needs somebody to reach out to them with the love of Jesus. And God has strategically placed each one of us at this moment in history to make a difference for him. It's for this reason that Jesus sends us. And here's one more thing that Jesus says. This is from the message version, Matthew chapter 10, verses five to eight. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick, raise the dead, touch the untouchables, kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. You have been treated generously, so live generously. We need to give, but we also need to go. We need to pray, but we also need to say. We need to support, but we also need to show. We've been treated so generously. So in turn, we will live generously. We give as freely as we receive. Jesus crosses the street and he comes to us, to you and to me on the right side of the road. Let's do what he does. And then the people in our city and your city will be helped and reached and loved and served. This is community impact. This is why we cross the street. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you for every one of my friends who has invited us into their homes today. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for your plan for them. And God, we want to thank you that in the big picture, you came to us, you touched us, you healed us, you set us free, you lifted us up. We thank you for that, Lord, but we also see our picture. Our picture is that we are to go even as you came. You sent us even as you were sent. So God, help us to find creative ways to cross the street. Thank you so much for our partners, oh God. We pray your blessing upon them. But Lord, we also pray that you'd help us, oh God, to have greater impact than we've ever had in this very, very needy time in history. So God, send us. God, help us. God, inspire us. God, lead us as we go to the other side of the street in Jesus' name. And you may be watching us today. Maybe you have tuned in many times. Maybe this is your first time. Maybe you go to church. Maybe you've never been into a church. But you can't honestly say that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't honestly say that you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. And I want to give you an opportunity to do that because I just believe that God is tugging on your heart. I, I just believe right now that you're sensing this pull and, and that's the Holy Spirit. You might not know what that is, but that's the Holy Spirit. And he's pulling at your heart today. And all you need to do is just receive the gift. All you need to do is in faith, accept Jesus and ask him to forgive you of your sins. And I'd love to have the honor of praying with you a prayer that will guide you in doing that. So I'm gonna ask you if you'd repeat this prayer with me. It won't be my words, it's gonna be your words that you speak directly to God. But, but if that's you, if you wanna have a relationship with Jesus, if you wanna give your life to him, if you wanna know forgiveness and freedom and joy and strength that God gives, he's right there, he's crossed the side of the road. Don't, don't go say, don't say to him, I, I don't want your help today. You need his help today. So let's just pray this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving your life for me. Right now I open my heart to you and I ask you to come into my life 
as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me my sin. Please forgive me my bad choices. Please bring me into your kingdom. And Lord, I give my life to you today. And I promise that I will serve you forever. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, what an awesome thing you've done. This is the greatest miracle that could ever happen in your life. If you do something for us, could you go to our website, Bethel.ca, and at the top tab, it says, one of the, one of the tabs says, I prayed. If you hit that tab, you see a form. If you could fill out that form, we would love to help you in your newfound journey of faith. We love to connect with you. We love to give you information that can help you. And for anybody who's a guest with us today, please go to our website under online services. There's a form there you can fill out that you visited with us. We'd love to connect with you, respond to any questions or help you in any way. You guys, we just love you so much. So let's just keep walking together in Jesus' name. For all of our church family and friends, thank you so much for joining us. We, we love you so much. I miss you so much. I reach out right now and I give you another virtual hug. You can't wait to that moment when we're together again. But let me pray. Let me pray for you as we go in Jesus' name. God, I just pray that you bless our families, bless our friends of God, bless every person who is watching this service. I pray, God, that your anointing and your power and your presence would rest upon each one. Lord, motivate us to cross the street. Motivate us, oh God, to reach out. We want to be part of this great plan that you have called the kingdom of God. We want to be part of what you're doing in the world today. So God, bless your people. Anoint your people. Strengthen your people. Comfort your people. Encourage your people, I pray, and use us in power and in strength for your glory and your honor. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us today. We love you and appreciate each one. May God bless you as you serve him, as we serve him together. In Jesus' name, amen.